In the final year of World War II, the skies over Europe became the stage for one of the most decisive yet least understood technological mismatches in aerial warfare. German pilots flying the feared Messerschmitt BF-109 and the Falkenwolf FW-190 found themselves overwhelmed not just by the growing numbers of Allied aircraft, but by a simple, ingenious British invention that gave their enemies a critical edge in high-speed combat, the Spring Tab. By early 1945, Luftwaffe pilots were being shot down in staggering numbers, especially during high-speed engagements with the British Hawker Tempest. German aircraft, though highly capable at low and medium speeds, became nearly uncontrollable above 400 miles per hour. At those speeds, the aerodynamic forces on their control surfaces were so intense that even the strongest pilots could barely move a stick. Ailerons, the surfaces that control an aircraft's roll, would stiffen so dramatically that they were essentially frozen in place. To roll their planes, German pilots had to exert up to 60 pounds of force, and often that wasn't enough. British fighters, however, maneuver with ease, even in steep dives. To German pilots, it seemed like a violation of physics. The secret was deceptively simple. The Tempest was equipped with a device known as a spring tab. This was a small, hinged surface attached to the main ailerons. As the pilot moved the stick, the spring tab would deflect in the opposite direction, helping push the aileron against the air pressure. The faster the aircraft flew, the more the spring compressed, and the more assistance it provided. It was like having power steering in a car, long before that concept became common. While German engineers were trying to solve control stiffness with complex hydraulics, which added weight and mechanical risk, British engineers had solved the same problem with spring and clever aerodynamics. The impact on air combat was immediate and devastating. Tempest pilots retained full control authority at high speeds, allowing them to pursue enemy fighters through dives, rolls, and turns where German aircraft became unresponsive. It flipped the entire combat dynamic. What had once been a defensive maneuver, a high-speed dive to escape, became a death trap for Luftwaffe pilots. Their aircraft couldn't roll, couldn't turn, and couldn't respond fast enough while the Tempest stayed agile and locked on. In January 1945 alone, 47 German fighter pilots were killed in encounters with Tempests. German engineers were blindsided. They initially dismissed reports of the Tempest's capabilities as exaggerations or pilot error. After all, every nation faced the same laws of physics, or so they thought. Their own tests concluded that reducing control forces at high speeds without hydraulics was impossible. Even when they examined down Tempest, they mistook the spring tabs for simple trim tabs. It wasn't until December 1944, when engineers inspected a relatively intact aircraft, that they finally realized what the spring tab actually was and how it worked. The reaction was disbelief, followed by dismay. The mechanism was brilliant in its simplicity, and it solved the problem the Germans had deemed unsolvable. But by then, it was too late. Retrofitting the Luftwaffe's fighters with similar systems would have taken months, time they no longer had. Emergency fixes were attempted, including installing hydraulic aileron boosters in a few FW-190 variants, but these systems added weight, reduced reliability, and didn't perform as well. Meanwhile, the Tempest spring tab system was reliable, lightweight, and required minimal maintenance. The result wasn't just a tactical advantage. It was a strategic one. The Luftwaffe's inability to match the Tempest's high-speed maneuverability meant the Allies could strike more freely and more often. Fighter losses among the Germans became unsustainable which in turn exposed their ground infrastructure to relentless bombing. And the psychological toll on Luftwaffe pilots was enormous. Many began refusing to engage unless they had a clear advantage in altitude or numbers. They knew that in a high-speed dogfight, the Tempest held all the cards. 
Even more ironic, many Tempest pilots didn't even realize the edge they had. The spring tab was classified, and most believe their success was due to training, tactics, or sheer flying skill. In truth, they were flying aircraft with fundamentally superior control systems, technology that their enemies didn't understand until it was too late. After the war, Allied test pilots evaluated captured German aircraft and were stunned at the extreme control forces required at high speeds. Some question how German pilots managed to fly them at all in combat conditions. One British test pilot famously remarked that the FW-190, without spring tabs or similar aids, might as well not have ailerons at all at 400 miles per hour. The Tempest, by comparison, handled like a trainer at the same speed. The spring tab's influence extended beyond the cockpit. It allowed pilots to fly longer missions with less physical strain. They returned from combat less fatigued and more alert, often flying multiple sorties per day. German pilots, by contrast, suffer extreme muscle fatigue after even one mission, sometimes needing days to recover. Mechanics and Luftwaffe units describe pilots coming back with strained shoulders, bruised ribs, and a growing sense of defeat. Some pilots even requested armor plating be removed just to lighten their aircraft and ease the burden of maneuvering at speed. And that's perhaps the most underappreciated aspect of the spring tab, its cumulative impact. Not only did it win fights, it preserved pilot energy, allowed more missions, and reduced training washout rates. These factors quietly added up over time, giving the RAF a larger, more effective pool of pilots at critical stage of the war. The legacy of the spring tab extended far beyond World War II. Its design principles were adopted and refined for post-war fighters, transports, and even civilian aircraft. In many ways, modern flight control systems, particularly fly-by-wire systems that adjust control forces electronically, can trace their conceptual roots back to the spring tab. It was proof that a small, clever solution could have massive ripple effects. In the final months of the war, the spring tab became one of the silent killers of the Luftwaffe. It didn't drop bombs or fire bullets. It didn't roar like a Merlin engine or blaze across the sky. It was just a spring, a hinge, and some smart engineering. But in the hands of a skilled pilot, it turned a fast fighter into an unbeatable one. It gave the Allies an invisible edge in the air and contributed to the collapse of German air power. And perhaps most importantly, it showed how sometimes the simplest ideas are the most powerful. While German engineers were chasing complexity, British engineers quietly changed the course of air combat with one of the most elegant and 